this video, I want to talk specifically about making predictions from models. And we're going to look at some data about Android smartphones. Now, one of the basic reasons we make a mathematical model is so that we can make predictions about what might happen in the future. If we make a prediction for a relationship by assuming the trend will continue in the future, we call this an extrapolation. If we estimate a value within the data set we are given, it's called an interpolation. Now we have to be really careful about making extrapolations because there are often sudden changes in the real world that affect the data. Let's look at the pattern for Android smartphone sales in millions during the time period from 2011 to 2014. We're going to declare the variables, graph the data, and find a linear regression model to start out. In our data table, we have the years 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. The Android smartphone sales are 240 million, 460 million, 720 million, and 1,000 million, which would be 1 billion. Let's start by declaring our variables. We clearly have two quantities, the time in years and the sales of Android smartphones in billions. Let's use the variable t to be the years since 2011. And let's write the re-index time above the table of data we have. So 2011 would be time equals 0, 2012 would be time equals 1, 2013 would be time equals 2, and 2014 would be time equals 3. There's actually nothing wrong with setting t as the year since 2010. You might find it easier to do the math that way. Your model will come out with a slightly different y-intercept, but as long as you've declared your variable and what it stands for, it won't matter. Whoever is looking at your work will see exactly what you meant. Let's use capital S to be the sales in millions of Android smartphones. Now let's go over to Desmos and graph time t against s sales to find a linear regression model. In my header row, I'm going to use lowercase t sub 1 and capital S sub 1 to represent time in years since 2011 and sales in millions of Android smartphones. My data points are 0, 240, 1, 460, 2, 720, and 3, 1000. I'll use zoom fit to find the data on the graph. And you can see that the data does actually look pretty linear. The first value is on the vertical axis at 240, and the data is spaced out and increasing at a fairly steady pace. Let's start with y equals mx plus b to remind ourselves what a linear model is and then change our variables to match the header of the table. We'll change y to be capital S sub 1. Make sure that if you used a capital in the table, use a capital in your expression here as well. Change x to be lowercase t sub 1. And finally, change that equal sign to be an estimation sign tilde. That gives us a lovely linear regression line that looks like it fits our data very well. In fact, the coefficient of determination r squared is 0 0.9972, which is extremely close to 1, so we definitely have a good fit for this regression line. Let me make sure I understand how to write the line. So I'm going to write capital S of t equals, and then my slope, 254t, that's the mx part, plus the y-intercept, 224, and that fits the line perfectly. If you're not sure where that comes from, just look at what the linear estimation line looks like. You can see the S is in both places. The M is the M value that comes from the parameters. T is in both places, and B is the B value that comes from the parameters. Let me grab this model and move back to our question. Using the model, we want to make a prediction for the number of smartphone sales for Android in 2018. Now, 2018 would be seven years since 2011. So we want to find s of 7. So that's going to be 254 times 7 plus 224. So we can simply work through that math. Or you could go back to Desmos and ask to find capital S of 7. Again, that works because we have the model in function notation here. And the answer we get out is 2002. So our prediction in words is that we predict that there will be 2,002 million, which is 2 billion, sales of Android smartphones in 2018. Now let's see what happens in reality. We're going to add three more data points to our table for 2015, 2016, and 2017. That's going to correspond, that's going to correspond to time equals 4, 5, and 6. Let's jump over to Desmos and add that. 
I'll just go to the bottom of my table and tab to get a new line, adding the points for 1,150, 5, 1,280, and 6, 1,320. You'll see that that alters the regression line considerably. Let's zoom fit again to see all the data. Now, the data doesn't look as linear as it used to. It looks like the number of Android smartphone sales may in fact be leveling off a little bit. You'll notice that the regression line has actually shifted to accommodate the new data. We have a graph of both the regression line and the model that we wrote down. I'm going to turn off the regression line graph by clicking on the circular icon to the left of the regression model so that all I see is the linear model we built and the data that we've plotted. And now let me add the point we predicted, which was 7, 2002, to this graph. We were asked the question, do you think the prediction we made will be accurate? From the new data we've added, I would have to say that I don't think that that value of 2 billion Android sales in 2018 is likely to be accurate. It seems that we've chosen the wrong type of model for predicting what happens over the long run in this situation. Now there's no way to know that without seeing more data. In fact, if you were a manager producing Android smartphones around time equals 3, which would be 2014, you might have made this prediction for growth. But a smarter manager might have realized two things. One, that you will eventually start to saturate the market and the growth is going to slow down and level off when that happens. And two, there could be increased competition from a product that's not even developed yet. In a lot of scientific processes where there's very little interference by unpredictable circumstances, like in lab experiments, in physics and chemistry, we might be able to make extrapolations that are far out in time. However, when scenarios involve human behavior, weather, free markets, or other unpredictable circumstances, predictions more than a couple years out are not very reliable. And if you see a company making predictions more than five years into the future, you should be very wary that the predictions are reliable.